I got an email from Jeff and he's designing up a Dreamcatcher for his scroll saw. And uh, he was kind of stuck on the design part of it where uh, we would uh, put in the webbing and he wasn't quite sure how to do that. So I thought I'd put together a quick little tutorial and show you exactly how to uh, put together uh, lines like this as a part of a scroll saw design. Uh, the thing with the, uh, with the webbing in the uh, in the Dreamcatcher is that they are just a series of lines and what we got to do is kind of thicken up those lines so they look about right and then turn those lines eventually into an object so that we can weld or union them all together and create one giant scroll saw pattern. So let's go ahead and get started. Over on the left I'm going to grab the Bezier tool. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of click once and then click again and that will draw a straight line and I'm just going to do this around my circle and I'm not really trying to get it too even in fact I tend to like dream catchers that are not symmetrical uh, and once we close that up it creates our lines here uh, now what we got to do is thicken up that line so it looks a little bit more appropriate so I'm going to select my selector tool and then down in the lower left I'm going to double click the stroke uh, and that's going to pop up a stroke dialog box and I'm going to choose the stroke style and right here is where we can set the width of our stroke and I'm going to bump that up to maybe 14 pixels and something like that looks kind of nice so I think I'm going to go ahead and use that. Uh, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to grab the node editor and I'm going to double click on this line and that's going to add a node and I'm just going to kind of pull these uh, kind of this point in just slightly because each row on a dream catcher tends to pull on the string from the row previous and so I'm going to go ahead and pull a little bit into each one and that's again that's just a double click to add a node to the line and then I'm going to pull it in a bit and then I'm going to go ahead and connect these dots with the Bezier tool again. So I'm going to grab the Bezier tool. I'm going to click, 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 and I'm just going to go around the Dreamcatcher until I get to back where I started from. And I'm going to go ahead and repeat the process. I'm going to grab the pointer tool and bump up the width to 14 pixels and something like that looks pretty good so I'm going to grab the node editor and then once again we'll um, we'll start uh, pulling some of these points in just add a little bit of a, a, a node and then pull it a little bit toward the center a little bit and then we'll just kinda continue doing that again with the Bezier tool I'm going to click. Oh, it looks like I missed a couple. I, let's back that up a little bit. Getting a little ahead of myself. There we go. And now we'll grab the Bezier tool and then we'll connect these points once again. And that will close up that circle. Select the selector tool and then uh, we'll bump that up to 14 pixels as well. And again, we'll just and I'll do a rinse and repeat. I'm going to put this on pause until and then just kind of continue on doing the same thing and then I'll show you the next step. So I went ahead and finished up the uh, the Dreamcatcher uh, with all the webbing and one thing that you could kind of keep an eye out for is like areas like this where the uh, the layer kind of pokes out and all we got to do is go in there with the node editor and just kind of pull that back a little bit uh, so just kind of keep an eye out for that kind of uh, stuff like that I'm not going to worry about it at this point uh, but uh, here we got a series of lines that kind of make up the dream catcher and uh, it would probably be best if you jumped onto like Google image search and just see how the webbing is actually put together on dream catchers and kind of match the same design uh, so these are a series of lines and now what we got to do is kind of turn them, the lines themselves into an object uh, so that we could union them all together. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just select all of the items uh, except for the circle. 
and then uh, I'm going to come up here to path stroke to path and what that's going to do is it's going to take those thick lines which is only consistent of two points a beginning and an end and turn it into an object which is more of a rectangle so you have uh, one on each corner and I could illustrate that really easy right here uh, let's just make a straight line right here and then let's bump this up to oh I don't know 25 and we'll just really see what it is uh, so a line consists of two points you got a beginning point and an end point uh, so that when we move the lines uh, it's just um, two points to deal with and if we change the line width to let's say 10 uh, everything kind of shrinks down uh, because we're dealing with the line width uh, what we want to do is turn that into an object uh, the, so that the width becomes more of an object and not a line and it's kind of an abstract concept but uh, you'll kind of understand what's going on here in a second uh, so once again we got a line two points beginning and end if I come up here to path stroke to path what that does is it turns it into a rectangle with four points one on each corner and now I could take those points and I could uh, alter them uh, just like you would any other object so and that's basically in essence what we're doing here with the uh, Dreamcatcher. We turned these lines into objects. In each one of the corners you would have a node. So now what we could do is uh, if we change the uh, the um, the webbing into gray and then maybe we'll put an outline on it. That way you could kind of see a little bit better about what we're dealing with. Let's turn that into a black stroke with a one pixel stroke on there. And you can kind of see now that these are objects and they're just kind of overlapping each other. Uh, what we want to do is weld those all together so that they're one object instead of many different layers of objects. And all we got to do is come up here to uh, Path and Union and that welds all those objects together and now you could kind of see that instead of a whole bunch of objects we have one object and they're not overlapping any longer and then we could also weld that to our overall circle uh, so we come up here to path union and now let's turn that into a gray with a black stroke uh, one pixel stroke and now you can kind of see how that's all kind of blending together and that's how you would do uh, like a dream catcher or any other kind of line work that you're going to want to eventually turn into an object so that it becomes part of a design uh, rather than just a simple outline so that is how you would accomplish that uh, if you have any questions just leave a comment below and I'll try my best to answer them um, the next question I kind of wanted to answer and I could do this really quick I got a question from uh, Robert and he was asking how to save an image as a JPEG and uh, that's kind of a tricky little question because the answer is you can't save it as a JPEG with Inkscape uh, PNGs uh, work better with vector programs and JPEGs work better with um, bitmap uh, type software but what we could do is uh, kind of a kind of a, a workaround here so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take this object I'm gonna export it as a PNG so export bitmap and it's gonna pop up this dialog box and I just want to do the selection and then I'm gonna browse to my desktop and I'll just call it uh, dream call it dream catcher and then I'll click save and then click export and what that's going to do is it's going to export it as a uh, PNG and then from the PNG we can use a program like GIMP so I'll come up here to file open and then I'll browse to my desktop, the Dreamcatcher, I'll click open. And once we have it open in GIMP, uh, what we could do is we could re-export that as a JPEG. So I'm just going to come up here to File, and then uh, Export As, and it's going to pop up this nice little dialog box. And we 
on this pull down we have all kinds of different uh, options. We want JPEG and I'm going to save it on my desktop and I'm going to save it as dreamcatcher.jpg and then click export. It's going to pop up a little dialog box Ask me the quality. 90% uh, is good, 80% is also a good option and I'm going to click export and that's what we're going to do and now we have our JPEG uh, completely exported. So it's kind of a roundabout uh, way of getting to a JPEG, um, but you pretty much have to use a different program in order to convert it. Uh, so that's how I would go about doing that. Uh, I hope you found this uh, quick little tutorial uh, helpful. Uh, be sure to swing over by my blog over at scrollsawgoodies.com. Uh, you could also join the discussion over at scrollsawvillage.com where you could ask questions like this and I'd be more than happy to answer any of your design questions. Uh, and then there's also a great community there as well. So if you have any scroll saw questions, uh, that's a great place to ask. I hope to see you over there. Uh, until next time, uh, happy scrolling.